So here is the thing. This I, I decided to go ahead and solder this whole thing up. I've got the whole video recorded with the solder tutorial and the whole bit. But in the midst of everything, I just got tired of, of the, the same thing over and over and over again. And what I mean is that every video I've been doing where we're doing a new board, new layout, we go through a solder tutorial. So the same thing, hey, use more flux, make sure you tin it really good. Don't clip the thing and get it all over the place. Watch out for splatter, clean it really good. Okay, so there's the deal. Now, what I wanna tell you first though, about what you're seeing right here. This is the Armiton Marmot frame. So it's a little bit on the newer side. Been using the Chameleon for years now. The Armiton Chameleon, it's you know been for a while also the Armiton TI. And the Armiton uh, Rooster was another one that we were building for quite a while. And the two of those actually used the same, the same head, which is another point I want to bring up. This one here we've determined uh, <laughs> is too small for the full-size camera that would normally go in here. So keep that in mind when you go to buy one of these. You can only use one of the minis, which, you know, is maybe probably the one you were going to buy anyways. But just know that it does it's not going to fit there. Other than that, though, the mechanism up here works really well. So I'm really happy with that. Now, the rest of this, I have Armiton Oomph Titan motor. So here's an empty box if you want to look at that. And uh, the thing with these motors is that they have a clockwise and a counterclockwise and not that i want to make a video about the the motors but just in case since i happen to be here because i think they're pretty good motors but they are they do have this counterclockwise clockwise thing going on now with the brushless dc motors they can go either direction so what the hell are they talking about so what it is is that these motors don't have the threaded shaft like you'd normally see on most motors the inside is threaded and for two of the motors, the threading is going to be reversed and the other two will be standard, which is kind of could be fine, but if you lose one of them, it's gonna be a little bit difficult to find, at least in the United States, a metric reverse threaded fastener, you see? So if you do like these motors or anything like these, anybody you know that has a specialty kind of uh, contraption on how they connect, if you love them, make sure that you buy extra accessories. Then after you have your motors mounted onto the frame and possibly your wires routed wherever it's supposed to go, the next critical piece of information you need is how to orient your 4-in-1 ESC on your frame. Now, you're not gonna find a, a big arrow on here like you would on your flight control boards, but there is some information here that can help you figure this out if you know the motor numbering pattern. So over here, this is motor number one, this is number two, number three, and number four. So it's like a backwards N. If you look down here on the 4-in-1 ESC, the CL Racing Board has a number one right here in this corner. So we have one, two, a three, a four. So that is your information then to lay this in the proper direction. How will it matter? Will it matter? Well, yeah, I mean, I guess it doesn't have to matter as long as this gets wired to number one. You could put number one over here and run it down and underneath and wrap it around and get there and it'll still work and it'll be fine. There's no accelerometer gyro in here, but I would say that that's pretty damn weird, okay? So that's how we figure that out. Then another generalized concept here, things having not necessarily to do with this specific ESC or this specific flight control board, before you start soldering everything down, make sure that you've got proper spacers underneath there because you don't want to have this touching the carbon because of course you know, you're going to have problems there. And you want to make sure that you have all the proper spacing between all of the boards that you're stacking. So pre-assemble everything, make sure that they're all good and everything looks okay there. Make sure you have room for the nut and make sure that nothing up here that you've just stacked up exceeds the plane of the plate that you're putting on top of here, okay? That is a big, huge step because you could screw that up and then have to end up desoldering all this.
then before you go ahead and plug your battery in for test, because this is major milestone number one, we can do a test right here to make sure everything's working before we build the whole thing up. Be certain that you have scanned over the entire board. You don't have any little blobs of solder inside here. You don't have any little clippings, trimmings that have made their way in here. Everything is spotless. There's no flux anywhere, okay? And then make sure you also check some obvious stuff like did you put the red with the positive and the black with the negative, just like you see here, right? You might even want to take a screenshot of that if you like, okay? Now, I am going to go ahead and do a test on this. What you're going to see is the first half of the beep pattern. You'll get the da da da, but you won't get the dun dun, the last beeps, okay? I am just plugging the battery in, and that's fine for me. I'm kind of okay with that, you know? But they do sell smoke stoppers. It's a little interference thing in here that you can put in that will keep the board maybe from frying if it draws too much current, okay? You might want to look that up. But I'm going to go ahead and plug this in. If you're doing the same thing, when you plug it in, if you don't hear the beep tones within, let's say, the first second, unplug it. If you see smoke, definitely unplug it. And I also don't plug it in all the way. I just sort of touch half of it. Let me scoot this up a little bit so you can see what I'm saying. I plug this in kind of just the corner like this, and then I just sort of rock it over and touch it. And then if I need to, I can pull it out really fast. All right? So keep an eye on this. So listen, listen carefully. You're going to hear the beeps. I'll do this a couple times. Ready? That's what I mean. So then I'll unplug it. So you get the first half of the beep patterns, but then also watch the motors here. You can see that they all move. Sometimes I don't know if I either don't notice it or they're just, just really barely moving on a magnet. But, uh, so I'll give them a little twist, and then I'll try it again, you see? And they all jiggle and wiggle. So this is great. So this passes then that milestone, and now we can move on to the next, which is going to be the flight control board. Now in the next video, we're going to be talking first off about this connector right here, and maybe that might even be the whole video, just showing you how to do that, just to keep things short. I can tell you already that even though this is CL Racing Flight Control Board and this is CL Racing 4-in-1 ESC, this is a nice little connector that goes to this connector. They both do fit and they come in the box of each of those and it's really super great, except the motor wires do not work. They're backwards. So we're going to take a closer look at that in the next video.